network of awareness makes your brain coherent one of the fastest growing podcasts you can hear it 24 7 you got listeners out in london informationalists in paris the echo spreading out no parrot just dissect digest and share it the righteous rhymes hit the spirit click 90 times it won't perish because y'all's the mind ain't no fairy tale like the belly our parents it's time to rise don't get wary united minds it's apparent download every single errand but most ain't fit to catch it even if they were larry Interviews, the interludes, they into you, taking you on a journey like no other. It places you in a state of awareness. It's your fault if you hate the truth. Cause y'all even y'all always on this way, my brother. Better change your views. All praise to yeah. People, you are now tuned in to the Network of Awareness podcast radio station, giving you in depth information on society and culture in America and abroad, with messages of inspiration, with keen insights, reputable interviews, and much more. So, now, without further ado, your host of the Network of Awareness podcast, Aura, the Informationalist. He said, greetings, people. Welcome to the Network of Awareness. I am the owner and founder of the Network of Awareness and your host of this show or the informationalist. And tonight's broadcast for Testament Thursdays, as we always do, is we've been here before. And this is episode 50 of season four. And this show is brought to you by our sponsor, A1 Career Services by Danita Britton. Check out A1CareerServices.com and check out Danita Britton if you need people to fulfill positions in roles for your companies, if you are an entrepreneur, if you are looking for a job and you want to get something remote, work part time, change careers, work full time, want to work virtually or want to even get a job where you can work in person at a particular place or facility, check out Danita Britton at A1 Career Services. All right. So brothers and sisters today, It's not going to be a long episode like my two to three hour episodes like I normally do, but this episode will be impactful for the spirit, for the mind, for the heart, because this episode is all about perseverance. It's all about resilience. It's all about gratitude. It's all about appreciation. And it's all about understanding that the light is within you and that the most high created us in his image for a reason and that we are powerful beyond measure. We are infinite in expression and what we are capable of doing. So let's get into the show. So welcome brothers and sisters. And uh, today has been very hot as it has been here in the Tampa Bay area of Florida. Uh, Anybody that's been down in the South lately, you know, it's been hot. This is the worst time of the year for me in particular because of the humidity. I can only bear but so much humidity during the summer because um, it just makes it hard to breathe. But at the end of the day, I'm not complaining. I'm just looking forward to the uh, the months of November, December, January and February because um <laughs> This is uh this is one of those where it's like so hot where you better make sure that you are drinking a lot of water like I do anyway but I drink extra water during this time because it just warrants it and then my dog he like <laughs> He uh he doesn't like it. You know, when I take him on walks and he gets back home, he's like, he just lays down and starts breathing all hard, like <sighs> does that for like 20 minutes until he cools down. So yeah, just make sure you're drinking a lot of water, brothers and sisters, because it's been hot, 
hot as hell out there. And um, some updates, just to let you know, the the Roku channel is coming out in August. Uh, I'm gonna put out an episode, or should I say, I'm gonna put out a a segment or presentation on BitChute and Telegram this weekend. So if you want to follow me on Telegram or on BitChute, I do put out promotional um content in regards to that on IG, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, Telegrams and now BitChute. So stay tuned for that because I'll be putting out the promos for that so you can get it. Because what I like about BitChute and why I signed up to it and Telegram, which I've been on for a while, is that Telegram never marks me or censors me for talking about the science appliance. And if you want information about the science appliance, definitely check me out because um, I have a vast amount of information on my show on this platform about the pandemic, about the science appliance, and about all of the things that has been brought forth since that time of, let's just say, January of 2020, when it was first introduced into the United States. So stay tuned for that. Also, uh, you can download for people that haven't figured this out yet, for the life of me. I don't understand why, but let me reiterate because, you know, sometimes people's brains are not working. They got things going on in their life and, you know, they're a little foggy. But brothers and sisters, I'm on all platforms. If you haven't figured that out yet, I'm telling you now, I'm on every single platform that exists throughout the world. All right. I think the only platform that hasn't put my show in in their feed or whatever, in their platform or app is Samsung. But besides everywhere where else? I'm there. So if you want to download my show from any platform you like, go there. I prefer that you download my shows at networkofawareness.com because they always get up to date real fast. You can leave a review and please utilize the review links that I'm putting in my description box. And um, I'm going to talk about that too, because this episode is in, um, it, it's going to talk about that where um, I'm finally getting, you know, making strides in a direction that is pleasing to me in the sense of success and success in the sense that my show is finally, after two years, getting the notoriety that it deserves. And I think a lot of people were sleeping on my content and they just didn't know about it. So people are starting to finally figure out that I have great content in regards to um, society and culture, social sciences, music, relationships, um, the science appliance, of course. Uh, Also, when it comes to like Agenda 21, propaganda, politics, I cover a wide range and then ultimately I over I also cover spirituality and spirituality is really um uh the the base of everything even though my my category is society and culture and social sciences there is spirituality in all this because if it wasn't for the most high I wouldn't be able to have this platform I wouldn't be able to be the messenger that the most high wanted me to be and chose me to be and anointed me to be at the age Age of 18 years old, where this was all revealed to me. And obviously, I was nowhere near the level of maturity that I am now that I was at 18. So I wasn't ready to take on that responsibility. But I did. I did back in 2006. And if you ever get a chance, I don't know how they have it linked up. I think they have videos on YouTube because when I left those brothers, I left. I never looked back. But I used to be an executive producer of a radio show on the AM in New York from a Polish radio station. And it was some brothers that I linked up with um, that had a show called The Rockland Report out in Rockland County, New York, broadcasting out of Pomona. So if you get a chance to go on YouTube and type in The Rockland Report, there's shows that I'm on. And I was executively producing a lot of those shows. And I helped those brothers um, gain a lot of traction in what they were doing at the time when they were streaming as well as on the actual radio AM station. So I'm not a newcomer to this broadcasting thing. I've been doing it, you know, since 2006. I just took a long hiatus 
And I took a hiatus with this and with music to only in my early 40s, you know, to come back into music and into broadcasting. So for those of you that don't know, this is not my first rodeo. I've been done this before. This is not new to me. I didn't come into this like a spring chicken. But I did do my research and study for nine months before I decided to start podcasting. And a lot of the procrastination from starting the network of awareness was just fear, was just doubt. But I had to overcome that. And it's crazy because, you know, what this show is about is like we've been here before. Right. We've been here. We've had multiple lives. That's why deja vu is real. That's why reincarnation is real, because we've all been here before. And I know that I've been here before many of times. And I'm just trying to do my best this time around so that I could break that barrier, so I could break through the firmament and go to and ascend to a higher level, a higher dimension of enlightenment, of understanding, and of connection to the most high. Because this planet, brothers and sisters, is a prison, but it's also a school. It's also a school for us to learn many lessons. And the only reason it's a prison, and I call it a prison planet, is because Satan has a a lot of influence in this particular dimensional realm called earth. And that's why it's important for us to learn the proper lessons that have been laid out. It's important for us to adhere as much as possible to the laws and the principles that are within the covenant and within the universal principles that the Most High has laid out that cannot be broken by us or by the interdimensional beings. Even the fallen angels have to adhere to the laws of the Most High. So I wanted to do Testament Thursday because I wanted to give a testament today. And as I mentioned, I'm going to put a tab in the website for you to do a recording if you like to give your testament to your life, as well as if you want, you can message it in the website now and we will put it out there. But I wanted to say that I'm going to give a brief testament today to my life. And where I've been and I haven't forgotten where I came from, you know, and where I'm going. But let's go back to where I came from. If you don't know, um, when I when I started coming into what we call the truth of the most high and I started really understanding things for what they were, I grew up around people primarily that were so-called black people and so-called Hispanics. But what's interesting for me growing up is that a lot of people that that were uh, labeled as Hispanic were black. And it blew my mind because I didn't understand how a lot of my family members that were black people and were treated like black people were labeled as, as Hispanic because they spoke Spanish. And it's just crazy because I'm like, I didn't understand it. I just, you know, I didn't understand where these words came from. It's like, oh, this person's black and he's Hispanic. Oh, that person is Dominican and he's Puerto Rican and he's from Trinidad. Trinidad and uh, he's Jamaican and he's Haitian or he's black. I'm African-American black. You know what I mean? All these different social constructs based on colonialism, based on conquest throughout the ages. And I didn't understand it because I, I I grew up in what you would call, I guess, black culture, even though my family was from Puerto Rico. And I had family members that were very dark and I had family members that were kind of like a light olive complexion. And to me, my understanding of it all was is that through the oppression, and I want to make this very clear on my perception, through my oppression and in the oppression of my ancestors and of my family, I saw that that same struggle that black people were going through was my struggle because I went through it. Even though I may not be as melanated as my family members or my friends that I grew up with, we was all in this struggle together. And there was even, you know, certain, uh, white dudes and there wasn't many that I was around growing up, but you would come across them, especially in the Bronx. If you went to like a place like Drag's Neck, then you would 
would see a lot of white people. They even had a little Italy and this this pockets where there was a lot of white people. And then outside of that, within the city of New York and the five boroughs, you had a lot of black and Hispanic people. But what I also realized through research and study is that one of the reasons why these social constructs were created was to bring about division and have people looking at each other differently. And as I grew up, I really didn't gravitate to, uh, to that too much as far as within my own community. But what it did do, it did psychologically brainwash me because for quite some time growing up in the environment that I did grow up in, there was a lot of, I'm going to say not animosity, but resentment towards white people. And it was only because of the way we were treated. And me in particular, I was treated very funny by certain white teachers growing up. And some of them try to sabotage me, especially the Jewish ones. They'd always try to sabotage me. And I don't know if it was something in my spirit or what. Now, did I have white teachers that were very beautiful, um, caring and compassionate human beings? Absolutely. But I did have some fucked up ones. And growing up in an environment where a lot of the police officers were white and would treat you a certain way, I started to have this kind of uh, activism, activist personality that started developing within me that I, I believe it was always in me now that I look back. But I started to develop in that in the understanding that, hey, my life has value and I'm willing to fight for that no matter how much discrimination I'm going to receive because of the color of my skin. And when I look back at my upbringing, I'm so grateful for everything I've been through because I've, you know, there's people that say that, and I laugh when I hear this because it's not true, but there's people that say that a lot of um, Puerto Ricans and Dominicans and Cubans and Mexicans stick together. That's not true. I could tell you from firsthand experience, some of the people that used to hate on me the most were so-called Puerto Ricans. And I could tell you from firsthand experience that a lot of Puerto Ricans do not have no fucking unity whatsoever. That is a big, big um, farce. It's not true. If it was true, uh, things in Puerto Rico would be a lot better. You have to understand something. Post-traumatic slave syndrome fucked up the whole entire uh, Caribbean, the whole entire Caribbean, just like it fucked up people here in the United States and other places around the world, like the United Kingdom, like Australia. I mean, it, it, it goes so deep. And I'm here to tell you people that there's a lot of people that are so-called Puerto Rican and Dominican and Cuban. They don't stick together, man. They don't. They hate on each other just like any other black uh, a cultural ethnicity. It's it's a fuck fest because they with the with the powers during the uh, colonizing of these countries have done is really psychologically fucked up people to be caught up in their ego. And then you have other black cultures that you have certain people in this in those cultures that want to be white and they will protect the so-called whiteness uh, imaginary superiority opposed to their own people. I've seen it within my own fucking family. <laughs> I've seen it in my own family, people. So I'm here to tell you from my own personal experiences. All right. There's people from this, this black culture that has that speak Spanish and they don't fucking stick together. They don't unify when it, they need to. You may have a few here and there, but the majority of them don't. I experienced that as a kid. I experienced that as a teenager. I even experienced that going up north. And what I mean by going up north, when I went to high school for uh, about a year in upstate New York, when I left the Bronx, just when I was turning 18. And, you know, they had Puerto Rican people that was around and uh, like, you know, like like everybody that was, uh, I guess, that spoke Spanish or came from a Spanish speaking cultural background. And they were the, some, they were the first. I remember this dude named Billy was the first to hate on me the first day I came to school. But then you had. The, the section where it was um, black people from the South that migrated to, you know, to places like up north and they had their section and they showed me a lot of love. Then you had some white people that showed me love. So there's it's, it's funny how things work, because when it comes to the social constructs that have been placed on society and have been placed on the cultures of the world, it's all been purposely driven to create a massive, deep 
deep-rooted division on a spiritual level. And we have to awaken from this satanic, what I call satanic slumber, because Satan has his hands on all of this shit when it comes to people looking at each other in a certain way that doesn't create unity, that doesn't create some form of uplifting inspirational movement to something greater to help everybody collectively. And where I've been and where I am now, I don't forget where I come from, people. See, when I tell people based on my research and what I've gathered from listening to people like um, Michael Tessarian, listen to brothers like Yash Kara and listening to the brothers that I grew up with, like a brother that I, you know, that was much older than me, that schooled me, who was straight gangster because I grew up around a lot of gangsters, especially when I was selling drugs. A lot of Hebrew men kept me safe. And a lot of Hebrew men taught me shit to keep myself aware and prepared for anything when it came to the hood. And as many of you know, if you if you don't check out the story of Aura part one and two, especially part one, because I talk about how I sold heroin people at 15 years old. And I'm not proud of that. But let me tell you something. I learned a hell of a lot, a hell of a lot doing that. And I did it pretty heavy in the sense that I was I was dealing with grown ass men and I learned so much when I was in Harlem. Shout outs to Harlem. Shout outs to um, to Manhattan because Manhattan looked out for me at a time where I was vulnerable. I, I could have been lunch meat many of times because I ran away from home at uh, 15 years old and uh, I went into a world of chaos and came out of it unscathed because of the most high because Satan was trying to recruit me. But a lot of things that I learned in, in listening to these these brothers and even sisters that mentored me. All right. I had a lot of Mrs. Johnson's and, you know, Miss Lucille's and all types of people. And and uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Sen Senora Trudy and all these different types of ladies. Mostly melanated people too. People, it's a, it's, I grew up around melanated people. That's, that's where I come from. That's that's my heritage. That's why I claim it. You know, that's why I laugh at some of these cornballs that look at my skin complexion and think that they're better than me because they're darker than me. And I laugh at these motherfuckers because I'm like, you couldn't walk a day in my shoes, homie. Not a fucking day. You couldn't do what I do. You couldn't persevere what I persevered through. You couldn't be as resilient as I. Am. That's why I laugh at these motherfuckers because they're sorry ass dudes. They're very limited in their perceptions. And instead of hating on them, I really just feel sorry for them. I really do. That's why a lot of them, I don't even recognize them. I don't. I don't say shit. I just let them be because I'm like, whatever. You know, I understand where I come from. And as I got to understand by listening to the brothers bring the word of the most high out, I got to understand where I truly come from. And I did my research and I'm like, I got Hebrew blood in me. I come from a very strong line of Hebrew people, but I don't really hold on to that too much because at the end of the day, I look at myself as a spiritual being having a physical experience. It's great that I come from these types of people, but at the end of the day, I look at myself as I have been told by the by the great creator, the most high, Father Yahweh Elohim, that I'm a star child, that I'm not even from this fucking place, that he just wanted me to come here to learn certain things, but I come from somewhere else. And that is a fact. I can't prove it to you, but I know it to be true to myself. I think it's very important that if you haven't already, because I know some of you that listen to the show have, but if you haven't already, really understand who you are by understanding what you are. Because if you start to look in the mirror and realize that that whole entire physical embodiment is just a shell to who you truly are, and you start to understand that you are a miracle from the most high, I guarantee you, you'll start to understand more and more who you truly are. And where I've been, people, I've been in some dark ass places, dark ass places. And um, I'm glad that I made it out. And when I look back and having this great understanding of who I am now as a man that is currently in his mid 40s, I'm, I'm so much looking forward to what's ahead. Because where I've been has been very tumultuous. It's been very turbulent. But I realized why it had to be that way because the most high 
had to put me through some shit in order for me to get to where I am now. And that's and I had to go through this, this strife, this drama, uh, these negative situations. I had to go through many life and death situations. You know, I had to go through out of body experiences. I had to travel through portals and go into certain dimensions to get a better understanding because it all adds up. You see, when I saw myself in 2001, July 4th, when I stepped into a portal that I didn't even know I was stepping into in the woods, and I saw myself transform into the Hebrew that I come from, that Hebrew bloodline, and I saw myself with the white robe, I had this long beard, and I was older. That was the crazy part. I was, um, I think I was 24 at the time. But as I stepped into this portal, I somewhat aged, and I had a white robe and a crown on. But I didn't know what the fuck that meant. I didn't know. It was surreal. Let me tell you, it's, it's, probably, it's probably one of the most wonderful experiences that I've ever had for the time that it lasted. It felt like 30 minutes, but it probably could have been three for all I know. And when I saw it, it was like, oh, but it didn't make sense to me until I started listening to Yash Kara back in like 2007 and 8. And it was like off and on. And then by 2010, I started becoming more of an avid, consistent listener. And then all of a sudden, he was talking about the white robe and talking about like understanding spirituality and where certain people come from and understanding that the Hebrews were on all four corners of the planet. Then I started saying, wait a second. And then I started doing more research based on the information I was gathering. And I was like, oh shit, now this is starting to make sense. And if you never heard the show, I'm going to put it out from the blast of the past. I'm doing a blast from the past series where I put out a 10 minute segment from past shows. So this week, um, I'll, I'm putting it out tomorrow on IG and TikTok. I'm going to put out a 10 minute segment from the interview I did with Yash Kara, which was episode 111. And I had said some things to Yash about if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't understand why racism existed in the way it did as I was growing up because it was until I understood through listening to his platform about the how um, Deuteronomy 28 describes how Hebrew people were the enslaved people. They were going to have to go through these trials and tribulations with the yokes on their necks and everything. And then I, I, it was like I had an awakening. I had an epiphany. And it was one of those moments where I had to just sit back in my couch at the time and say, oh shit, this makes so much sense. That's why I have so much respect for the brothers and sisters that have presented this information that has helped me to better understand who I am and why things are the way that they are. And going through a lot of these things throughout my life, and I say this with the utmost respect, a lot of people cannot do what I or ex can, would not have survived what I survived in my life. And I remember my friend Chung used to always say to me, like, he said, if I would have experienced what you experienced with your daughter's mother and all of the drama with that that came with it. And I mean, people, when you want to talk about going through extreme racism and being put through the fire and being like just having my ass whooped by the United Serpents of America, especially when it comes to this white, this white and entrenched so-called supremacy within this um, country when it comes to the judicial system, when it comes to law enforcement, when it comes to the education system, people. I've been through the fucking fire, through the motherfucking fire. This shit that I can tell you that I've been through that you're like, you would probably say, oh, I don't know if I would have been able to handle that shit because a lot of people that have gone, a lot of brothers, especially melanated brothers who have gone through similar experiences like I've been through. They wind up killing somebody. They wind up going to jail. They wind up killing themselves. And I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it in court in the state of New Jersey. Obviously, we've all seen the, you know, various amounts of YouTube and social media videos 
about brothers losing their shit and doing all types of crazy stuff because that's what this country does to you when you are a melanated person. It has a way of trying to always keep you down. And if you remember, I talked about this before. People don't understand that when the Reagan administration came in and they put all these laws for child support, they was like, oh, that's a good thing. People were saying they're making these laws so strict for men to play child support and be accountable because we got so many deadbeat dads. And it's not the case, people. They created those laws because they said, how can we get these fucking melanated black fucks in jail that are doing the right thing? What is another way to get men caught up into the system so that we can put them into the prison pipeline? How can we do it? Because there's other people that are not going to jail. They're actually going to school. They're doing the right things. They're not getting into trouble. Well, let's create the child support system. And guess what? What a master plan and how to fuck up brothers in life. They was trying to do the right thing. Because if you look, how many people you know that are good people people doing the right things, they get a woman pregnant that most of the time, not all, but most of the time that woman they get they get pregnant winds up being the biggest piece of shit ever. And now she has a fucking whole entire institution called the judicial system of family court on her side to make your life a living hell and to get you caught up so that you can self-destruct or go to jail. I bet a lot of you know those types of people because I was one of them. But all praise to the most high that I came through. I, I prevail with righteous colors at the end. So much so, people, that you hear me talk about how my daughter's mother currently, present day, owes me $10,000 in child support because I got full custody after 14 years of hell, people. If 14 years of me slowly but surely losing myself only to regain myself after 14 years of trial and tribulation all because I got a woman pregnant a white woman pregnant that I barely even fucking knew for less than a month and that shit woke me up the the, the shit that I went through woke me up and I was so grateful for it because I always de uh, dated melanated women but when I moved to upstate I had little flings with white chicks because there was a lot of white chicks that liked me so if they wanted to give me a little piece of ass I took it because I was irresponsible and there's nothing wrong with that in the sense that there's nothing wrong with people getting together if they're responsible and self-aware. I truly believe that, but I wasn't. I wasn't really self-aware at the time. I was very reckless. I was all into money and I was all into just, you know, doing me all the time. And I paid a heavy price for a lot of the bad decisions that I made. But when I look back on it now, it all had to happen that way in order for me to do what I'm doing now. And I love every moment that I have on this planet that the Most High has favored me to be a true messenger to remind you that the light is within you. And it always will be, people. It always will be. As long as you embrace the Most High, that light will shine bright. And I truly believe that this platform is probably one of the most inspirational platforms that's within the social science and society culture category. And based upon the love, and this is what I wanted to get to, is that let me tell you something. The support that I'm getting right now, it's it's very overwhelming sometimes. It's a little bit surreal because I'm getting a lot of support from people now. Like the podcast is finally, it's been growing. Like Let's not get it twisted. We're, we're closing in on uh, 20,000 downloads, right? But you all know it could be more than that if I wasn't censored in shadow ban. But I don't even care about that no more because the TV network is going to clean all that shit up, especially now that I'm going to be on bitch shoot and I can speak freely and Telegram, but I had to go through all this other shit. I was never a YouTube guy, even though my shows do get distributed to YouTube from time to time. Fuck YouTube. I fucking hate them. I hate YouTube. I really do. I think YouTube is good if you want to learn something or whatever, but for, for what I do, being a messenger for the most high, you, listen, if you're a messenger for the most high, get the fuck away from YouTube. I don't know why these brothers be like wanting to keep creating accounts. Get your own fucking web Website, man. Get your own streaming. Like, fuck these motherfuckers at YouTube because they're never going to let you make any money in monetization. They're always going to be flagging you for anything that you say is based on truth. 
move. So I say, fuck them. Fuck those putos. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, man. I'm glad I never got caught up in that YouTube craze, man. And a lot of it is because I stayed away from um social media for so long. I stayed away from that shit, man. I didn't want no part of it. None whatsoever. We've been here before, people. And it's important that we always just we always remember where, you know, where you're going. Remember where you've been. Understand that you've been someplace. Never forget where you've been. Understand where you're going and understand why you're going. I always tell people that have, you know, that tell me they want to start a podcast. We're going to get um, we're going to get another podcast onto the network of awareness um, in the months to come. For this fall, I'm looking forward to that, for that new podcast to come on board. Um, But I always tell people that want to get into podcasting, I'm like, have a purpose. Understand why you're doing this. Because in podcasting, it takes a long time to start seeing some some income from it, some significant income, something that's doable, right? It, It takes a long time. It's not, I'm still in my, I'm still a work in progress when it comes to establishing that type of presence monetarily which is fine because I have other things going on, but I'm going to make that happen, especially with the TV channel. The TV channel is going to give me an opportunity to really have a legitimate amount of income to support everything that I'm doing and to support uh, me and mine. So I'm so grateful to have an opportunity, not just to be a messenger for the most high, because that's first and foremost, but also to be a a platform that provides information that can help people navigate through these treacherous waters um, throughout the world, but especially here in the United fucking Serpents of America. And it's not just me now. I've brought on other people to my platform. So we are a network of podcasters now. And if you don't know this, it's not just me. All right. We have take one who's a young brother doing his podcasting thing and he's doing it very, very well for somebody who's never done nothing like this. It's like shit could have fooled me. But at the same time, he's a young man that takes counsel and education very seriously and he educates his mind and then puts it into effect. He takes the knowledge and puts it into application. And then you got a brother that is a little bit more seasoned and it was he was giving all of his gifts to IG by the name of Oxakai from Alpha Talk Series and 101 with Oxakai. And he's part of the network. And then we also have Imperial U Life, who is it's a personal development podcast, which only has one episode. <laughs> Let me let me just put that out there. It only has one episode, but in due time, my friend Billy is definitely going to get the time to really commit. It's just that he has so much going on. So I will definitely let you people know about that when the time comes, when he starts putting out more episodes and we'll be promoting it. Then we have the Passion Pursues Purpose podcast, which is my other podcast. That is about personal development and spiritual development, also entrepreneurship and people that have come from all walk of of life to serve a purpose. And that's why I created that podcast. And here I am a net, you know, have a a platform of a network of podcasters is making an impact onto this world. And I'm so grateful because if it wasn't for the most high, none of this shit would be happening right now, people. That's why it's so important to look from within instead of trying to seek some type of success from without, from outside of yourself, externally. And there's so much out there to distract us from who we truly are. We have to be very disciplined and understanding that we have to be very laser focused on getting to know ourselves so that we can better be equipped for all of the malevolence that comes and attacks us, all the spiritual attacks, all these demons that are lurking because they're gaining so much power because we have a world that is so lost, two thirds to be exact. And those two thirds are giving more and more and more power to these demons, to these dark forces. It's really sad, but true. That's why it's more important that we stay strong in our conviction of understanding and giving our praise to the most high and not stray away from that and be very disciplined and growing in that truth.
truth. Because we're all growing in this truth. We only can begin to understand what the Most High wants for us and what the Most High truly is. But what else are we going to do? We're going to go into the world and become worldly people? Many of us broke free from that. Why go back to that? And some of us are breaking out of that. And I salute to you, all you brothers and sisters that are breaking free from the worldly world of things. Because the only thing that truly matters is the Most High. And the only true reality within this existence is spirituality. Everything is on is spirit. But we are constantly being manipulated to believe that it's physical. And the physical is just a temporary experience, brothers and sisters. Truly. It really is. So like I said, this is not going to be a long episode. I'm not going to play any music, all right? Like I normally do. I'm not playing any music today. So if anybody's expecting that, I do apologize. But there's no music being played today. This was... This episode was solely to serve the purpose of bringing out a message of truth to remind you that, like it says on my um, on the quote for the episode we've been here before, is that we always remember where you are going and never forget where you've been. So where are we going, brothers and sisters? Where are you going? Where I'm going is I'm going to continue to serve the most high to my best of my abilities. I am going to continue to learn about myself and learn about my abilities. I'm going to continue to strengthen my weaknesses with my strengths so that I can better serve the most highest people. So I can better serve anybody who's willing to listen and want to embrace some truth. Because my message is not just for the one third. My message is for the two thirds too. Because there's two thirds out there that really want something more out of life. They just don't know where to go. But if they can just get somebody to give them a little bit of advice, uh, some positive reinforcement information to help them navigate through their treacherous waters and through their dark, narrow paths that they're walking so that they can start to ignite and brighten the light within so they can brighten up the light in the darkness. That's why I always say, don't look for the light at the end of the tunnel. But at the same time, you can make it to the end of the tunnel with the light within you by lighting up the darkness within the tunnel before you get to the end of it. People, we're in a time, we're in a place that is unforgiving. And that's why it's so important that we keep our faith up. We keep it unwavering. We keep, we stay true to who we are, but we constantly evolve in the very beliefs that we hold dear. We grow in this truth. It never ends. It never stops. The moment you think you have all the answers is when you lose. And you will lose all the momentum that you gain once you start thinking like that. Because the wise man or woman is not wise at all that thinks they have wisdom. It's the one that knows they have so much more to learn that is truly wise. Because wisdom is never ending. And the Holy Spirit can always be developed stronger and stronger and stronger day by day. And there's one more thing that I want to say before I end this broadcast. And that's this. Is that support your brother. Brothers and sisters in truth, people, don't talk about it. Be about it. If you say you're in this truth, then be in this truth and support people. Because I'm telling you, if you support, if you truly have support, for, and I'm not saying that you got to become best friends with people in this truth or whatever. I'm just saying that if you say you're going to support, just do it. And I guarantee you that with that support that you give others, you're going to grow stronger in the truth. You're going to get a better understanding understanding of who you are because to support others you have to share the gifts that you've been giving that you've been given and we all have gifts that we need to give back and that's why we shouldn't be expecting anything in return from other people because the most high already gave us the gifts. So what do we need to expect? All we need to do is do and keep on giving to the truth and building together in this truth. And I'm so happy where I'm at right now, people, because where I was, I haven't forgotten. And where I'm going, I'm looking forward to it. And I hope that you do the same. So brothers and sisters, I just want to say, and let me, let me put my piano on. I want to say it's time to awaken. It's time to be alive. And what a great time to be alive in these turbulent times where Satan is creating or committing spiritual crimes against those 
that he can overcome through manipulation and through his cunning ways because we're not strong enough. And there's many of you that are listening to the show. You have a lot of favor in your life. You just don't realize it yet. But when you start to understand your favor, utilize it and utilize it to the highest degree. Because like I said before, many of us are cursed. I know I've had some curses that I had to work through, but you can utilize the favor that the Most High constantly gives you and adds on to to work through those curses. Because that's what the Most High wants. The Most High wants you to come back in all purity, in all humility. And if you choose to do that, I guarantee you, life as you know it is going to completely transform for the better. So brothers and sisters, when you live in the present, there's always an opportunity for a new beginning. So start your beginning now. And don't look for the light at the end of the tunnel because the light is and always will be within you. So brothers and sisters, don't forget to leave a review for the shows. Download, subscribe to networkofawareness.com. Download from any platform that's your favorite platform to listen to. Stay tuned for my segments on BitChute and Telegram. And uh, thank you to all the people that support me on IG, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, and anywhere else that I forgot about. So brothers and sisters, I just want to say to you that I truly appreciate all the love and support and let's keep moving forward. But let's not forget where we come from, but let's look forward to where we're going. This is Aura the Informationalist from the Network of Awareness saying peace, love, and barakata. And let the light within you guide you. All praise to the Father. Yahweh Elohim and his son Yahweh bin Yahweh, our great creator of all that is and ever will be.